Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. In this video I show 10 knots you need to know on a sailboat or on a powerboat. This is just a short overview and I show you the knots briefly only once. I have for every knot I show here a separate video where I explain how to tie it step by step. You find a playlist with these videos in the info cards in the upper right corner. And there is a list with links to all these videos in the video description below, so you can find the respective knot you want to learn immediately. There are also timestamps for this video in the video description. I also describe all the knots I show here in my book Learn to Sail with Captain Sailnator and in the book Sailing Knots 10 Nautical Knots You Need to Know. You find links to the books in the video description. In this book I describe all sailing maneuvers step by step with many sketches to prepare you for a practical sailing course. And at the end of the book I explain the knots also step by step and easy to understand. If you don't want to learn to sail but just the knots then I recommend this book for you. It contains the same knots as the other book with the same sketches and explanations but without the sailing part. This book is smaller and more handy, you can put it in the pocket of your jacket and take it with you. Both books are also available as ebooks so you can download them for example on your smartphone. As I said, you find links to the books and ebooks in the video description. The first knot I show is the figure 8 knot. Here you can see how it is explained in my book. For the figure 8 knot, you take the end of a line and create a loop. by laying the shorter part over the longer part. Then I turn the shorter part around the longer part, take the end of the line from below and stick it through the loop. Then I pull on both parts of the line and the figure 8 knot is finished. If this was too fast for you, watch the more detailed step by step video about this knot in the playlist you can find in the info cards or via the link in the video description. Or have a look in my books for which you find the links in the video description too. The next knot I show is the square knot. With the square knot you can attach two lines of the same strength. I take the two lines and cross them. By doing so I remember which one was on top of the other. This one is the one that is above the other one. I take it and turn it around the lower one. Then I take the line that was on top first, lay it again above the other line and turn the ends around each other. Now the square knot is finished. It is tied right when both ends of the lines are on the same side. If this was too fast for you, watch the more detailed step by step video about this knot in the playlist you can find in the info cards or via the link in the video description. Or have a look in my books for which you find the links in the video description too. The next knot I show is the bowline knot. With the bowline knot we create a loop at the end of a line that does not contract. You can fix a line for example at a mooring post that way. I lay the line over my left hand with the end of the line to my right. I pull at the line so that the end is a little bit longer. Then I turn the end of the line from behind around my hand. That creates a loop where the end of the line lies over the other part of the line. I hold the line where the two parts cross with my thumb and my middle finger and lay the longer part of the line over my index finger. Then I take the end of the line with my right hand Put it through the loop from below and go behind the longer part of the line and then stick the end again through the loop but this time from above. Then I pull on both parts of the line like this and the bowline knot is finished. A loop that does not contract. If this was too fast for you, watch the more detailed step by step video about this knot in the playlist you can find in the info cards or via the link in the video description. Or have a look in my books for which you find the links in the video description too. The next knot I show is the cleat knot. 
This is a cleat which you will find at your boat or at the dock and there you can attach a line with the cleat knot and moor your boat. I lay the longer part of the line away from me. Take the shorter part in my right hand and turn it around the cleat. As you can see here, it now lays around the bottom of the cleat. Then I cross the cleat with the shorter part of the line. First turn a loop around the bottom of the cleat and then cross it. Then I put the line under the end of the cleat that points in my direction and then I cross the cleat again. This time I don't go around the other end of the cleat but I have to do a trick. I create a loop where the part of the line that comes from the cleat lays over the end of the line. I put this loop over the end of the cleat that points away from me and pull at the end of the line. Now the cleat knot is finished and we see two parallel lines that are crossed by another line. If this was too fast for you, watch the more detailed step-by-step -step video about this knot in the playlist you can find in the info cards or via the link in the video description. Or have a look in my books for which you find the links in the video description too. The next knot I show is the clove hitch. With this knot you can attach a line to another line or to the railing. I lay the line over the traverse line and take the end of the line from below. I cross the part of the line that is now turned around the traverse line and take the end again from below. Here is a loop now where I stick through the end of the line. Now I pull on both parts of the line and the clove hitch is finished. As you can see, there are two parallel lines crossed by another line. You also can tie the clove hitch in another way. In this case I don't stick the end through under the crossing line, but I create a loop with the end of the line and stick that through under the crossing line. This is the clove hitch on slip. The knot is quite tight as well and if I pull at this end, the knot is open very quick. So I can tie the clove hitch like this or like this. If this was too fast for you, watch the more detailed step-by-step -step video about this knot in the playlist you can find in the info cards or via the link in the video description. Or have a look in my books for which you find the links in the video description too. You also can lay the clove hitch over something instead of tying it around something. For doing so, I take the end of the line and create a loop where the shorter part of the line lies under the longer part of the line. Then I create another loop next to the first one where again the shorter part of the line lies under the longer part of the line. Then I put the loop that is more far away from the end under the other loop and then put both loops together over my thumb which represents a mooring post for example. Now the clove hitch is finished. Again we have two parallel lines that are crossed by another line. If this was too fast for you, watch the more detailed step-by-step -step video about this knot in the playlist you can find in the info cards or via the link in the video description. Or have a look in my books for which you find the links in the video description too. You also can throw the clove hitch for example around a mooring post. Imagine the end of the line is attached to a boat and I want to fix it at a mooring post which is my thumb now. Then I take the line, create a loop where the part of the line that comes from the boat is lying over the other part of the line and put the loop over the thumb. Then I create a second loop where the part of the line that comes from the boat is lying over the other part of the line and put the loop over the thumb too. Now the clove hitch is finished. Again we have two parallel lines that I crossed by another line. The next knot I show is the sheet bend. We use it to connect two lines that are not the same strength. 
As you can see here, one is thicker than the other. I take the thicker line and create a so-called bite or bay at the end, where the shorter part of the line points away from me. It's called bite and not a loop, because the lines don't cross. I hold the bite between my thumb and my middle finger and point forwards with my index finger. Then I take the end of the other line, stick it through the bite from below, pull a little bit and lay it over the index finger. Then I take the end of the line from below, get it up to the front and stick it through the loop under my index finger. Then I pull on both lines and the sheet band is finished. The ends of both lines are on the same side. If this was too fast for you, watch the more detailed step-by-step -step video about this knot in the playlist you can find in the info cards or via the link in the video description. Or have a look in my books for which you find the links in the video description too. The next knot I show is the double sheet band. It's nearly the same knot as the sheet band, but we stick the end of the line through the loop under the index finger two times. We also attach two lines, where one line is thicker than the other one. I again create a bite to the thicker line, where the shorter part points away from me. I hold the bite between my thumb and my middle finger and point forwards with my index finger. Then I take the end of the other line, stick it through the bite from below, pull a little bit and lay it over the index finger. Then I take the end of the line from below, get it up to the front and stick it through the loop under my index finger. For the sheet band, I would now pull on both lines, but this time I take the end of the line from below again, get it up to the front and stick it through the loop under my index finger a second time. Now I pull on both lines and the double sheet band is finished. If this was too fast for you, watch the more detailed step-by-step -step video about this knot in the playlist you can find in the info cards or via the link in the video description. Or have a look in my books for which you find the links in the video description too. The next knot I show is the round turn with two half hitches. With this knot we can attach a line to another line or to a ring. I take the line and lay it over the traverse line. I take it from below get it up to the front and lay it again over the traverse line. Now we have one turn around the traverse line and a half turn. Now I can take the end of the line and turn it around the longer part of the line and stick the end through this loop. Then I repeat that process exactly the same way. Now the round turn with two half hitches is finished. It has to look like this. Two parallel lines are crossed by a single line. If this was too fast for you, watch the more detailed step-by-step -step video about this knot in the playlist you can find in the info cards or via the link in the video description. Or have a look in my books for which you find the links in the video description too. The next knot I show is the rolling hitch, also called stopper hitch. I lay my line over the traverse line, take it from below, get it up to the front and cross my line. I get the end of the line up again and cross my line a second time, right next to the first turn. By laying the line over the traverse line, a loop emerges. I take the end of the line again from below and stick it through that loop. The rolling hitch is finished. We have again two parallel lines which are crossed by a single line. I can now push the knot in one direction, but if I pull it in the opposite direction, it stops. Finally, I show how to attach a line to a cleat with a bowlin knot. Again, we have a cleat and a line. First, I tie a bowlin knot in the end of the line. I showed how to do that earlier in this video. Use the timestamps in the video description to find the bowlin knot. 
Here it is, and now I take the loop and stick it through the bottom of the cleat till the knot reaches the cleat. Now I take the loop again and lay it over the upper part of the cleat like this and then over the lower part. When I pull at the line, it is now fixed at the cleat. Now I can lay the line around a mooring post, come back and attach the line a second time with a cleat knot. Next time I want to leave the dock, I only have to loosen the cleat knot, pull the line back on board and cast off without to have to untie a knot at the mooring post. If this was too fast for you, watch the more detailed step-by-step -step video about this knot in the playlist you can find in the info cards or via the link in the video description. You also find the knots in my book Learn to Sail with Captain Selnator and in my book Sailing Knots. Explanations and sketches are the same in both books. You just have to choose which one fits better to your needs. I self-publish the books and I would be glad if you buy one of them and support me as an independent author. Thank you very much!